Casual Roundhouse reporting from Carolina Combat where I'm being joined by a professional lightweight, soon to be featherweight potentially, coming off of a huge win at Fight For It this past month. Also holding a 2-0 and professional record, Josh Motzinger. Josh, how you doing? Dude, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. We just got done doing some kickboxing, some grappling. Um, coach is out of town. He's watching the fight. So, John, you know, he ran a heck of a class. But I can't complain, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Let's, uh, let's dive into your most recent outing. It was uh, originally supposed to be at lightweight, and then your opponent withdrew. So you had a replacement come in, and he wanted the fight to be at featherweight, correct? Yes. Well, first he said, I, I guess they said 45-55. Um, they kind of realized I was a little bigger than uh, a lot of 45 guys. Um, so the fight ended up being at 45. Uh, and, yeah, it was like a three-week notice. I think I was about 175 when I got the, um, when I got the call. So it was about a 30 pound cut in three weeks. Um, but in my mind, I thought I, I thought I could make it. You know, um, I ended up missing <laughs> missing the weight. What was your, what was the weight that you? Would you make it to the scale at? Just curious. Yeah, so I was 149.6, um, and the day before I was 183.6. So I'm not sure. Dude, no, sorry. that's not 183.6. I'm tripping. Um, I was 163.6 going to say that's a 40 pound cut yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have been crazy no, it was, yeah. good deal and um your opponent on top of that that was the short notice replacement he had an experience advantage over you and was also a black belt but you controlled the fight wherever it went for the most part you stayed ahead when the grappling exchanges were occurring and it was a primarily grapple heavy fight so after the win you were actually gifted your purple belt yep. from sensei tom did you anticipate receiving that belt after the fight, or was it just kind of all in the spur of the yeah. moment? Yeah, well, first, shout out to uh, my opponent, you know, Shelton Sales. He's a beast. He took the fight against, you know, not a not an easy opponent. Um, and he took a fight when, you know, I did miss weight, so shout out to Shelton. You know, he's a super super cool dude. But, you know, fight was great. Um, you know, I got I got the win. And afterwards, yeah, I got my purple belt from, from Sensei Tom. And it was – I – didn't expect it. I knew I was gonna get my purple belt eventually, but I didn't expect it to be that night. Um, how it happened was Brian got me after my fight and was like, "Hey, come to the room. They're clearing out the room. You know, we gotta we gotta leave the arena." So I went to my room and I was getting my bag and um, I had my trophy that they gave me. And Tom's like, "Hey, don't forget your trophy." So like, I stand up, I grab the trophy, I turn around and I put it in my bag. And then Tom was just like, hey, like, let me, there's something in your hair. Let me check real quick. Uh, and then, on you. Yeah, and right there I was like, all right, something's going on right now. <laughs> and then I turned around and then I looked down, and, you know, the purple belts are on my waist, which is pretty cool. It's definitely pretty cool, especially considering the fact that Shelton's a black belt. I think I said that already. But regardless, for you to go in there in a grapple-heavy affair and control it as a technically lower-level belt, that's very impressive. And it just kind of shows that maybe – you're more advanced than people think, so they got to keep an eye out on you. But nonetheless, with that win, you're now at 2-0. and You're slowly looking to work your way up and eventually fight for bigger organizations. Do you have anything planned in the near future? Anything scouted out maybe? Yeah, so next year, early next year, February, March, you know, right now I'm cleaning up my diet. I do eventually want to make 145 and prove to the people I can, you know, make 145. Uh, so February, March, and then honestly just taking it a fight at a time. You know, I got a killer team around me, you know, Brian, Brian Battle, Jonathan Martin, Shmeek Harvey, bunch of killer amateurs coming up. We got, you know, my boy Upright, um, Benji, Ali, Eman, you know, Jamie, a bunch of guys coming up. So there's a bunch of fighters in this gym, you know, to push me. So I'm just taking it, you know, fight by fight and, you know, living by that faith, you know, that whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Um, and I can just control the work I put in. And yeah, so next year. February, March, and then, you know, fighting on the summer, fighting in the year. So at least, you know, three, four fights and just staying active. Good approach to have, especially considering momentum follows with wins. Josh, appreciate your time, brother. Yeah, Hopefully we get bro. to interview with you again. Thank you, man. Thank this has you. been Michael Trochet with Casual Roundhouse, Josh Motzinger. We'll see you in the next one.